All right, so today we're going to go ahead and do a review for your test um, that is on tomorrow. So if we're looking at number one on here, number one, you're following these directions here, which says list the layers supporting the law of superposition. The first thing you must know is what is the law of superposition? Raise your hand. Kanisha. Young above old. Remember the lyrics. Always young above old. So what should go down here? The, don't give me the letter. The what? You just told me always young above old. The oldest should go down here going all the way up till we get to the youngest. That's the first thing that you should think about when you think about the law of superposition. You should not be just start listing them. Remember the two things I told you to think about when you are um, about to list the rock layers. What were some of those things I told you to remember to do? Label the features, she said. Do we have any features on here? What are they? We have a fault. You might want to darken that and maybe even label it. It's okay if you write on that, kind of making this picture make sense to you. That's your fault. And we know that that's a what? That's a feature. And in the song, it says features and events are always younger than layers effect. Is it affecting all of these layers? So we know just off the top of our head from that song that they're going to be the youngest. Then what's the second thing I told you to do before you do anything else, Joel? Identify the rock layers. Over here we have G. What's over here? G. G. Good. Over here we have D. What's over here? D. Over here we have K. What's over here? K. K. So we know what all the rock layers are. We don't have any confusion, right? So now are we ready to label them according to the law of superposition? Yeah. All right. Raise your hand. What's the oldest? Kanisha. G. G. Telling the story of the earth, what came next, Joel? Um, D. Good. Continue telling the story of the earth, what came next, Erica? K. Okay. And our trees? Q. Q broke them all. Any questions? We're good, right? Yeah. All right, so... Now, looking down here, it says, what is Q? You already answered that for yourself because you labeled those things. So what is Q? Q is a fault. In case you don't remember what a fault is, a fault is a what? It's a feature, but what is a fault? It's a break. How do you remember that? What's the clue that I gave you? Raise your hand to help me, to help you remember what a fault is. You say, ooh, you broke it. It's your fault. Good. Any questions? All right. Moving down then to number two. For number two, we need to fix something here. I want you to get rid of this L here. It shouldn't be there. The typo shouldn't be there. Now it says, for the below diagram, you're going to use the information to pro information provided to label the rock layers. Now we're going backwards. I've already listed them from oldest to youngest. Now you have to take this information and put it over here. So far so good? Okay. So we know that the oldest rock layer is going to be where? On the bottom. The youngest is going to be? At the top. At the top unless it's a blank or a blank. One of those other things that are always younger. Fought and intrusion. So we have to look at those things. So can we still identify some events on here? Yeah. yeah. What uh, Do we have any, I mean, not events, any features? Yeah. What are the features? Yeah. Do we have, we have an intrusion? Yeah. What's the intrusion? Yeah. This stuff, right? Yeah. This is an intrusion. So we can label that intrusion. And do we have a fault? Yeah. What is it? The line, the line. Very good. This line right here. And we can label that a fault. 
So again, let's say intrusions and faults or features and events are always younger than layers affected. So any layers that they affect, they're going to be younger than those layers. Let me ask you this before we move on. Is the intrusion older or younger than the fault? Think about it. Is the intrusion older or younger than the fault? Savani, you say younger. Why? So you're telling me that the intrusion came after the fault if you say it's younger. Kanisha. Exactly. Remember, features and events are always younger than layers affected. The fault affected the intrusion, so therefore the fault is younger. The intrusion's older. It was there first, and the intrusion got broke. Remember, the intrusion is molten rock. It's going to harden, and it can break. And you see, the layers are shifted, so it broke. Correct? Okay. So now, looking at our rock layers, now we have to be able to label them. Which layer would be represented as R? And you can get up and go point to it. Which layer, Kanisha? Go ahead, point. Let the record show that Kanisha is pointing here. And that is R. Any objections? All right, then let's go ahead and label that R. What came next? Raise your hand. What came next? Savani, you can go up and point to it. Let the record show Savani's pointing here. What letter is that? C. C. Is this also C? Yes. Okay, so just for your information, you can go ahead and label that just so that you can see the whole picture that that's also C. Question. Okay, Artrice wants to go up and do the next one. What would be A, Artrice? Anything else? No? Is this rock layer the same as this rock layer? So should this also be A? Which is why I tell you in the beginning to label your rocks so you identify them. So you don't think that this blank is here for another letter. It's the same as A. Got that? Okay. What is H? Go ahead, Makai. Let the record show he's pointing here. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. And here. This is the same. These both are H. Is this hard? No. No. And then the youngest would be the fault. Because the fault affected everything. Everything? Everything. It wouldn't be the intrusion was longer and went through the fault. It would be the intrusion would have stopped at the fault. It wouldn't have went through because remember the fault is a break. It's a gap. It breaks it. If something breaks, there, if you notice if you break a vase, there's a space in between that vase. It's not going to go through that space. It's going to stop at that space. So if the intrusion only went here and didn't affect any of that other stuff, then we would know that the fault came after the intrusion because you have to remember the intrusion is not... Um, another line, it's actually rock that has that was liquid and then it hardened and then it can break. Everyone good with this? All right. State the law of superposition. Well, you did that up in the very top because you knew you needed to know what the law of superposition was to be able to figure this out. So down here, passion, what's the law of superposition? If you write that, that is perfectly fine. Always young Above, old, always young what? Young, but young what? Young layers above older rock layers. Very good. You want to get sophisticated with it. You want to say something like in an undisturbed sequence, meaning nothing happened, no disturbances. But writing this, perfectly fine. Good? Kanisha. Oh, that's what we're going over there. For number three, need to make some corrections. On yours, you had an X here. Put that in. 
Your paper probably said, describe the disturbance X is. This should say, describe the disturbance N is. Nobody should have to point it out to you because my paper looks exactly like yours. Let's answer the below questions. What does V represent? But before we do that, whenever we're looking at these rock layers, what did I tell you to do? Label the features. So let's take a look. Do we have any features on here? What do we have? Intrusion, which is letter? Okay. And we have an unconformity, which is? N. Notice what we're doing. We're not answering any questions for this. Let's say if this was a test. We're making everything clear to us first. We're getting all of our information that's in our heads from our notes out. This is a good test-taking technique. When you're taking any test, whether it be in this class or any other class, or if it's in an EOG or a state exam or a benchmark or whatever you're taking, don't just rush to answer the question. Break your information down that's in your head because you know this stuff. You just told it to me. All right? So be confident in yourself. Don't just jump in and start answering questions because then you'll skip and forget information. Take that time. That's what it's there for. Do we need to do anything else before we go on? We've, we've labeled our features. What else do we need to do? What's the second thing I told you to do? Identify rock layers. We have L over here. Is L identified anywhere else? Where? On the other side of the intrusion. Is F fully identified? Yep. H? Yep. G? Yep. All right, so now we can see the big picture. So now let's answer our questions. What does V represent? Raise your hand. Samaje. Intrusion. And we've already labeled it, so we're good. Can you see a question? All right, one second. Let me give someone else a chance. Somebody that has not raised their hand yet. Talia. Describe the disturbances, and which N is, and it is an unconformity. Now, before you go on, you know that it's a wavy line, so it's an unconformity. Before we move on, you want to remind yourself of what an unconformity is. Think of the rat. It said unconformity. It said um, something, something, and unconformity. That's what the song said. Good job, Savani, for opening up your notes to double check. Good job, Joelle, for getting out your binder. Way to go, Kylie and Odell and Kanisha and Jaden. M, not Johnson. He should be looking in his notes. Samaje. It is an absence of rock layers. Another word, another word, phrase that can be used to? Missing rock, absence or missing rock. So you know that an unconformity is what? Absence or missing rock. So now that you have that information, you could say it's an unconformity all day long. But if you don't know what an unconformity is, then that doesn't really help you. Thinking of the song, you know that it's missing rock. It says missing rock and unconformity. So now you have to list two ways, an unconformity, what's an unconformity? Missing rock. Two ways that missing rock happens. Sally, give me one. Non-deposition. If you put non or no deposition, that's fine. But what does that mean? Remember the key word that's in deposition? Deposit. deposit. What does deposit mean? To put in, not to take out. I don't want you to deposit any money in my bank if you think that means take out. I want you to deposit. I want you to put some money in there. All right? So we have, if it says non-deposition, then now it means it's not there. Nothing was put there. So that could be explaining what error, what age. What age of rock layer. What age of the earth could that explain where no rock layers got put there? It was frozen. Nothing happened. Ice age. Okay, so missing rock could be nothing got put there or, Joel, erosion. What is erosion? What's erosion? Uh, Aaliyah. It got wiped away by water or wind. Good? Huh? No, this is your study guide for you to study. So make sure you make notes on the side. You don't know what non-deposition is? No layer. No layer placed. Or no layer there. 
You can put a little note, ice age. Erosion is what? Washed or wiped away. And you can put some weather. Rain, snow, sleet, hail, wind. Any questions on this? Alright, let's move to number four. Number four says study the below diagram and answer the questions. Well, before we do anything, remember those steps I told you to do. It was one step. Label the features. Do we have any features on here? Okay, what are they? We got an intrusion. What letter is the intrusion? U. Here's your intrusion. And we said we're labeling these features, so we should probably call this a feature. Right? And then we have a fault, which is? This is your fault. And that's a feature as well. Are all of our rock layers identified? Now F over here, where else is F? F is here and here. What about P? Good job, Aaliyah. It's also on the other side. And it's here. Z is also here. H is good. C is good. And B and S are good. Right? All right, so now looking at our question... It says, for A, rock layers P and Z have folded. H, C, and B have tilted. What kind of disturbances are these? What kind of disturbances are these? Huh? Events. Tilting and folding both are events. Intrusions and faults are called features. U represents a intrusion. You label that. Good. O represents a fault. You label that. What type of disturbances are U and O? Intrusions and faults are called features. How many of you... <laughs> How many of you are doing well so far if this had been a test? How many of you think that you would have gotten this entire front and aced it? Now, maybe not 100, but aced it. Okay, very good. 